Welcome. In this webcast, we present a new perspective on strategic investment, drawing and synthesizing on new valuation methods from finance, such as reoptions, and basic concepts from game theory and strategy. Our first example concerns how to analyze a strategic investment program available to another company and which exploration development strategy to pursue. As noted, exploration programs for oil or other R&D programs involve multiple contingent stages. Here we have an exploration stage of two years, which requires an investment up to zero in exploration drillings and appraisal drillings, and a subsequent commercialization phase or production phase that requires putting down the platform, an oil platform, which requires a huge investment of 1.2 billion. There are also uncertainties involved. Due to uncertainty in oil prices, the value might go up or down. The value of the future commercialization project can be estimated using the present value techniques, so the expected value of 200. 700, 500 million, and 200 million can be estimated at time zero using the present value. The net value is 852 million over here. There is uncertainty in this value due to uncertainty in oil prices. During the two year period, oil prices may go up or oil prices may go down. There is also uncertainty involved in finding the quantity of oil. So this 852 might go up with a factor 1.5 per year or might go down with a factor 0 0.67 per year. After two years we can decide depending on the resolution of uncertainty whether we put down the platform. To make an option valuation is actually quite simple. We have to look forward and then reason back to the optimal decision to make. Like many things in life, life can be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. An option valuation consists of three steps. One, we construct an inventory of the underlying value. So based on uncertainty, we have a forward process of the underlying value. Two. We make investment and abandonment decision based on the conditional payoffs. And three, after we have estimated the conditional payoffs, we work the three backwards to the current value. Step one, we construct an inventory. This is the forward process. So we have the value of 852, and it might go up with 1.5 or go down with 0 0.67, depending on uncertainty of the underlying value or the uncertainty in oil prices. So the 852 might go up to 1.2 billion, or it might go down to a little bit more than 500 million. Or it might go up again, or it might go up and go down, or go down and go up, or even events turn out worse than expected everything might go down. So this is the expected value. It might be better than expected or worse than expected. This is the first graph. Is this exploration strategy worth pursuing? We must consider two decisions. Should the exploration be undertaken? And if so, should we place the production platform of 1.2 billion after the expiration results are known. The opportunity to vest in this project is actually similar to a call option with a maturity of two years and an exit size price of 1.2 billion. The underlying asset is the value of the expected future cash flows of 852 billion. Suppose that the uncertainty during the exploration phase yearly increases with the multiple factors of 1.5 or 
or 0.67, we get the event rate. As a decision tree analysis, we have to look at the end of year 2 to determine the optimal decision. At the end of the exploration phase, management must decide whether to put down the platform. The worst possible outcome of the exploration stage will be zero if we don't put the platform there. Step two in the option evaluation. Determine the optimal investment decision at the maturity of the option. At maturity of the, of the option, the investment decision depends on the resolution of uncertainty. In an upward scenario, the value of the reserves would be worth 1.9 billion, which justifies the investment in the platform of 1.2 billion, and the payoff would be 717 million. So we make the investment decision there. However, in the average scenario, the value of the reserves are 852 million, which doesn't justify the investment of 1.2 billion. So we abandon the project and the payoff would be zero. Also in the downward scenario, the optimal decision is to abandon the project with a payoff of zero. Step three, calculate the current value of the payoff. Under risk neutral binomial option valuation, the current value of this conditional claim to achieve the 717 million can be determined from expected future up and down values discounted at the risk-free rate with expectations taken over the risk-neutral probability. We can calculate the risk-neutral probability from the underlying value. The risk-neutral probability, P, is defined as 1 plus the risk-free rate times the value, underlying value, at time 0 minus the value at the downward state divided by the value at an upward state minus the value at the downward state. In this case we have 1.04 multiplied by the value at time 0 is 852 minus V down is 568 divided by V up 1.278 minus V down is 568 and that equals a risk neutral probability of 45%. Stepping back to future payoffs 2 times 0 we can calculate the option value of this conditional claim. So 45% times 717 plus 55% over 0 divided by 1 uh, plus the interest rate results in a value of 310. Similar, taking the risk neutral expectation over 0 equals 0 and again stepping backwards in time uh, 45% times 310 plus 55 percent over zero discounted at the risk-free rate results in a current value of this claim of 134 million which is the value of this exploration license. When several bidders contemplate the acquisition of the same asset they may not know the exact value when they bid. Where good information as to the target value is difficult to come by or just uncertain, bidders are obliged to fall back on trying to estimate its value independently. When the company is worth roughly the same to all bidders, the only thing that distinguishes them is their respective value estimates. The winner will be just the one that makes the highest estimate. In fact, if the average bid is accurate, then the highest bidder we have overestimated the target's value, so by definition the winner is likely to have overpaid. This is the winner's curse. So let's look at an example of two licenses with different risk characteristics. We have distribution A of a license which is certain and distribution B of a license which is more uncertain. So 
spread of bits of B will be wider than the spread of A. So now think about it for yourself. Which license will be more vulnerable to the winner's curse? Well, in this case, the auction mechanism will select the highest bidder. In this case, it's the highest bidder A, and in this case, it is of B. So the average is not important, but only the highest bidder is important in case of an auction. License B is most vulnerable for the winner's curse, because the winner is the one who overestimated the value the most. Anyone who bought antique at an auction knows the unpleasant feeling that creeps upon you when you just have outbid a professional trader. They just know more than you, so you're certain that you have paid too much. Other practical examples of the winner's curse can be found in the newspapers. Consider, for instance, the 2000-2001 auctions of UMTS licenses in Europe. They almost all suffered from the winner's curse. These were high uncertain assets with high gross option value, but which were very hard to value. 